how can we change the system, I, I always go back to where I began with this by saying you have to understand what sort of a system it is. Um, you know, if you think of it as a, a fixed system, you know, whose broad design came off the mountain and inscribed in tablets of stone and has been this way since time immemorial, then you are going to be a bit baffled and a bit intimidated by it. But if you recognize that it is a human system that's dynamic and is changing, it makes the, the task more plausible. So I always say to teachers, uh, if they ask me, they say, how can I change the system? Well, the first thing is to recognize that you are the system, that everyone in the system is a manifestation of the system. So if you change what you do, you are changing the system. If you are working with 30 kids in a classroom and the door closes behind you, what you do next is the system. So if you sit them all down facing the front, that's the system, because you are the system to those kids. And if you say, get up, just stand up and let's move the desks around and let's try something different, the system is already changing at that point. If you're a head teacher and you reorganize what you do in your school to be more effective and more vital and interesting, you're changing the system for all the teachers, all the kids and all the parents who have anything to do with that school. And the interesting thing about this to me is that there is much more room for innovation in the system as it is than very many people seem to realize. I mean, because broadly you can make changes within the system. You can make changes to the system or you can get out of the system if, if you're a parent or a student. They're your options. So th there's a lot more room for change in the system. A lot of things that go on in schools are actually not required by law. They're not mandated. They're just habits that everybody's fallen into. Uh, you know, there are very few examples of legislation, certainly in Western countries, where governments have gone as far as to say the classroom has to be arranged in this way and there have to be 40 minute periods and it's very important that maths teachers never speak to the art teacher. Try and make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, these are just habits and they can be changed. And so step one is to recognize that you're the system and you can begin to make the change. Second is that system can build into a movement if people collaborate. And in many countries the emphasis is on competition, in some like Finland the, the emphasis seems to be much more on collaboration and, and that's a powerful, um, a powerful impetus for change. And if enough people change then that's a movement. And if enough people move and move in the right direction that's a revolution. And that's, why I'm, that's what I'm arguing for. I'm, I'm not talking some you know, kind of blood on the streets, I'm saying that we can change the way institutions do things if we recognize the extent to which we embody the institution in our own behavior. And some of the problems of the institution are in our heads when we show up. And if we can change our minds, then we can change the institution. And, and the last thing I'd say about it is it is actually happening. It's, it's, and, and things do shift. It, it, you have to take a slightly longer view of it. You know, but as we speak, states across America, the, of the 50 states, state after state, is passing legislation to approve same-sex marriage. I lived through the 1960s, I think, and then, you know, at the, so at the height of the so-called sexual revolution, there was no talk of that. It was such an outrageous idea. It was so far off the agenda that there would be wholesale approval of same-sex marriage. It well, just didn't come up. It, even when people were talking about liberation in every second breath, it wasn't. People were still going to jail you know, for being attracted to members of the same sex. And now, state after state is saying, absolutely, what's the problem here? Let's just approve that. And what's interesting to me is this isn't just in the kind of coastal, as it were, liberal states, it's across America. And this hasn't happened because members of the Congress met in a caucus and said, you know, what we need to do now is go out and persuade the country to approve same-sex marriage, you know, because we all like it. Not at all, they're doing it because there's a shift in the culture. People are saying, we need this. Can you please get on with it? And that's how social change more often than it happens. It bubbles from the ground up. There's a shift in the zeitgeist. There's a different way of seeing things, a different way of doing things. And I think those things are happening already. Uh, in America, there's more and more resistance among parents to standardized testing and by teachers and by kids. Uh, people have understood understood or begin to understand that the old bet about going to college and getting a degree and having a secure life afterwards is off. That doesn't work the way it used to. There's a mounting um, volume of student debt 
that people are resisting adding to and thinking, well, do I need to do this at all? Employers are saying we're not really interested in whether people have degrees in very many cases. So that, that equation is shifting. Meanwhile, there's all kinds of disruption going on through the impact of new technologies. And the culture itself is in flux all around the world. And then you get countries like China, uh, South Korea, um, Singapore, Hong Kong, Hong Kong not a country, but a territory, where politicians are saying we need now to be promoting creativity in a way that we didn't before, we need to develop individual talents, mainly for economic reasons, but they're still saying it. So there are these shifts happening, and it's never clean, it's never easy, it's never simple, straightforward and overnight, but there are forces of change at work which I think are moving in the, in the interests of people who want to see these sorts of transformations happening. But to come right back to the beginning, if you change what you do, if you create a new atmosphere in your school, you've already changed the system. And you don't have to wait for the rest of the world to do it, you can get on with it.